Lounge in the morning, still joined by Rodeo Backstage Ed. We have a special guest. He might look a little familiar to some of you, um, but he's first run on Nafi Lounge. He's a recording artist. He was groomed in the Carolinas, and now he's making his home in Chicago, Illinois. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Nafi Lounge and his maiden voyage, Mr. Isaiah Grass. What's going on, Isaiah? Good morning to you. Hi, guys. How are you? How are you okay. doing? And this, okay. this presentation, this segment of Nafi Lounge is brought to you by the good people of Music Beats Cancer. Music Beats Cancer is in the fight to solve and dissolve the ugly disease of cancer. And 950 and Isaiah are both a part of that. Go to music doc, musicbeatscancer.org for more information and see how you can contribute to beating this ugly disease. Isaiah, we can't thank you enough for a few moments today. Um, you know, uh, doing some background on your music, your guy that has a unique sound and um, a, a great look as an artist. Because I think, again, as technology has grown, music has become more, it's as much visual as it is audio, even though maybe some might not like that, but that's just the way the game is played now. Talk about being an artist. Um, groom in the Carolinas, North and South, now in Illinois and Chicago. Talk about just your evolution as a musical artist, as a young man trying to make it in this business. Sure, absolutely. So I would say that I graduated from a performing arts high school. After high school, I was scouted by modeling agencies in New York. My heart was really more into caring about music versus just being on camera. And so I put a lot more focus into being a musician. When I was younger, I actually used to sing in the church choir I used to also go to nursing homes and sing to the elderly. I was in a gospel choir in high school as well. So I had a really big background of, you know, music. And when I, I was discovered by a different agency, they kind of gave me that option if I wanted to be a model and fly overseas and pursue modeling or to, from the bottom, start as a musician and tried to build my career. And so that's what I was doing. I would say as an artist now, I've had so many wonderful opportunities because of the people that have believed in me over the years, all of the team members that I've had the opportunity to work with, radio stations such as yourself, magazines, TV networks, blogs, photographers, and even clients that have allowed me to be able to do what I'm doing now. I follow my heart when I write my songs and I truly feel that it's what I'm supposed to be doing. No question about it. So from a standpoint, uh, you look at music different than, than modeling. Because I look, a lot of people look at it in today's world, look at the entertainment, entertainment, whether you, you're talking right. or singing or acting or what have you. But again, I, I get the impression just from what you're saying is that music is different to you. Music is personal. It, it's like this is... Right. This is a different thing. And don't don't this is not this is not my hobby. This, this is my profession. So I think, again, I, I commend you for that, because I think in today's world, no matter what the genre of music is, a lot of people look at it as just something that I can just put something out there, touch it up in the studio and I got a song. And I think, again, that kind of takes away from the core you put out and the way you mm-hmm. present your sound. I, I feel like when you are on camera, it does go into the whole perspective of being an artist. You do have to have, as you mentioned at the beginning, there is a visual side of it. And I'm very grateful that I have had the opportunity to work with photographers that were really able to capture a certain entity for me to be able to portray that on camera as a singer. And so for me, I I focus more on the side of it of writing songs. And when I get the opportunity to work with a photographer, I try to just zone in and channel whatever I feel like that emotion has to be, just like every artist is doing. And, you know, I've just been really grateful to be able to work with some, you know, great talent agencies and, you know, photographers that have been able to groom me along the way. Yeah, so now I know that you said that you said that you was in the music and arts and everything else up here in New York and everything else. How was it for you to really get into the music scene at that time? And you said you was with the churches and everything else. How was it for you to build yourself and get to really know the vocals and everything else coming from that aspect? Sure. So when I was younger, I actually was going to sing gospel choirs. So I was singing like, oh, happy day. Like, I, I was doing all of it. And <laughs> you know, I got asked to do lots of solos when I was younger. I used to do church competitions and I would sing You Raise Me Up by Josh Groban. When I started doing music on my own, it wasn't so much of a a Christian music gospel vibe. It was more of just like 
what I felt my heart was led to do. You know, for example, I wrote a song called Wherever You Are, and a lot of people can take it as portrayal that it is a inspirational song or it could be a Christian song. But for me, it was just me following my heart with how I was writing it so people can portray it differently. When I, when I came to New York, it was a whole new world for me because you got to understand, I grew up in a small town in South Carolina. And so when I got to the big city, I was like, wow, like it was, it was so much to process. And so I've really had to be able to grow and, you know, nurture everything that I've been doing in my career to be able to blossom into something different every year. And so I feel like from the beginning when I started to now, there's been so much growth and I owe that all to the team members and all of the experiences I've had through my life as well. Yeah, okay. I, I can see, Isaiah, you're very conscious about your music and you're conscious about what you write. Let me ask you, because it's entertainment, it's entertainment at the end of the day. Would you ever compromise your music to, to basically sell more music? Because a lot of people in entertainment, you know, oh, if you did this, you would get more attention. So some you got a lot of entertainers that do compromise. They really sometimes later on say, you know, maybe I shouldn't have done that. But would you ever would compromise your music or basically just compromise yourself in the entertainment world? That is a great question. So when I first started, I'm sure everyone goes to this, but they have to find out how they're going to be molded. And everyone's going to say, hey, you need to dress like this and you need to write songs like that. And you yeah. need to have this and speak like that. From the very beginning, my first agent was allowing me to have creative direction of how I was wanting to be. And over time, it kind of transitioned just because as I got older and the experiences that I had gone through in my life, they had really just pushed me into a different direction. I'm not going to lie. I would love to be like, oh, maybe I should dye my hair blue or, you know, maybe I should change up my style a little bit. But I think it always comes back to being who I am as a person because I watch so many music videos and without like calling out people's names. There's just a lot of people that are just doing stuff for attention. And oh, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm trying very hard as an independent artist to be able to be pure in what I'm doing and allow that what I'm doing in from my heart is what's going to portray to people. I go back mm -hmm. to this again, my song, Wherever You Are. You know, that was a song that we used to promote Music Beats Cancer. And I've had people tell me that that song, one lady told me that she actually plays that song at her husband's grave. Mm -hmm. It's going to get choked up about this, but just thinking that, you know, somebody would think that a song that I wrote, that I stayed true to my heart for, and it was able to help somebody. I have another gentleman that says he has massive anxiety, and he listens to that song, and it soothes him, and it lets him to be able to just process whatever's going on. Now, see, if I was to go as an artist and create music that basically everybody probably wants me to do and change the sound, then I don't think I would be really staying true to myself. And so I feel like the growth for me, I'm happy with what I've done. You know, my mom, uh, she used to have a store and the, the top of the sign, it said, always love where you're standing. And that's where I have to like live my life right now as a saying that I am happy where I'm standing right now because I've had to go through a lot and to be where I am now without changing myself, without getting tattoos or getting grills on my teeth or, you know, changing the style of my music or, you know, speaking profanity or being doing all these vulgar things that people do for attention in videos. I'm sure you guys know who they are. I'm not calling them out. I'm just <laughs> no saying need, no need. <laughs> yeah. So for me, that's not my style. You know, I want to be a universal person. You know, I, I was just talking to my agent about this. I was saying that when I die, I would like that people know me for the things that I was doing to help people, not for the chaos that I was doing for attention. Because I feel like it, there's so much in the music industry where people focus so much on clout and not so much about the, the actual perspective of what it can do to a person. I mean, there are some really phenomenal people that make songs that are impacting people's lives. 
And then there's a lot of songs that people are just making for people to have music to shake their butt to and, Mm -hmm. you know, drink alcohol or, you know, do drugs. And I feel like with me, God has given me the opportunity with a platform that continues to grow in my life that I have a choice of either using it for a positive thing or I can just use it for the sense of attention. And there's been so many artists that are given this option. And as an independent artist, I feel that what I'm doing is the right thing. That's that's like, I'm glad you said, that's like selling your soul to so many people in the entertainment world. So to so, but you know what, Brent? You know, I think it only goes but so far. Believe me, maybe today, maybe you may be it, but believe me, longevity pays off in, in any job. And so sure. you continue to be yourself and continue to believe in yourself and believe in what you're doing, you will have longevity because you're true to yourself and people will see that. Thank you. Again, we're talking to Isaiah Grass, recording artist, um, brought to you by Music Beats Cancer. Again, go to musicbeatscancer.org for more information on how you can contribute to fight this ugly disease. Isaiah, you you mentioned that in, in, in your great soliloquy about um, your music being soothing and, and being a, a almost a min- part of your ministry of sorts where you're helping people get better. Um, we all met today because of music beats cancer. And I know that it, it means something to us three here. And um, this is a disease that in a, in a time of COVID people, uh, I'm not saying forgot about cancer, but uh, are not so much focused on cancer. We am hearing that people are having more and more advanced cancers because they're not getting to the doctors much. Talk about, the importance again, kind of you, you already elaborated, but kind of go a little bit deeper on the importance of being part of Music Beats Cancer and how you feel your music plays a role in that nature. Absolutely, I think that what Mona's is doing is wonderful to be able to use musicians to use their platform with songs to encourage people that there are other people out there in the world that need our help. And you know what you were just talking about with the pandemic. There's a lot of people that have showed a lot of selfish mentalities in the last year and a half and you know I feel like when Mona's created this platform for musicians to be able to you know do something positive with their music to be able to encourage people to give back to the world I was so grateful to be a part of that because you know many people in my family have died from cancer many people in my family are still with cancer my brother is a radiation oncologist so His job actually is to help find the cure for cancer. And, you know, when I was, oh, let's see, I think it was like three years ago, I got asked to write a song for a little boy who had leukemia. So cancer to me has been such a huge factor in my life. And so when I had the opportunity to be able to collaborate with Mona's organization, Music Beats Cancer, I felt led in my heart that I had to do everything that I possibly could to help people because, you know, I'm going to be honest, people really get this, an entitlement where they don't need to care about your problems. And I have seen this so much during the pandemic that, you know, a random act of kindness really does make a difference in somebody's life. And I, I go about and say this to myself, I have had a lot of emotional struggles during this pandemic. Sure. Like every musician has and everybody else, because our entire life went from like this to this. And we didn't have any way of controlling it, but we have to work on our mind and we have to work in our heart to be able to make that difference. And so with this organization, I try to put as much effort as I could with using my song, Wherever You Are, to really build that foundation and to bring it back to helping people with cancer. Because there are so many people that neg- get neglected. And there are so many people that don't have the money to be able to get chemotherapy or radiation you know, treatments or pills or stuff like that. So... Again, I was very grateful to be able to work with Mona for this. Jose, we can't thank you enough. And it's one of the reasons why we're involved as well. And again, like I said, I'm a believer. You you plant a tree, you plant a seed. And that tree doesn't necessarily grow today or tomorrow. But if you plant that seed, we're going to all be beneficial of it. So appreciate you, brother, on that. I'm going to take a quick break and come back. We'll talk about more of your music and a, a little of a show that you was a part of um, that um is kind of global with me now. We'll we'll dive more deep into that. His name is Isaiah Grass. It's Nafi Lounge. Come on back. Back on the ride, Nafi Lounge, still joined by McCoy and Arts, Isaiah Grass. Again, this ep- this segment of Nafi Lounge is brought to you by Music Beats Cancer. Go to musicbeatscancer.org to find out a way how you can help 
destroy this ugly disease, musicbeatscancer.org. And again, also presented by Backstage Radio. Um, Isaiah, um, in 2020, um, you was was able to get acknowledged by a, a program that a lot of us know called American Idol. And you did some time there. And, um, you know, uh, if you can kind of just talk about the experience of being on set. I hear so many people talk about American Idol and when, you know, they the long lines and, you know, meeting the producers. You got to actually be on TV. Talk about just that aspect of it for yourself. I was actually scouted online and the producers actually reached out to me and asked me to audition personally for the executive producers. So I didn't actually have to go stand in the line. Uh, Although American Idol gave me a tremendous amount of exposure, they did not portray me for who I really am as a person. And I'm very grateful to every opportunity that it's given me but I feel that over time I have to stay true to myself. And it's allowed me to realize that I would never want to go on a reality music television show again. I'm grateful for the doors that it opened, but I'm staying true to myself and I'm going to allow the journey of my career go as it needs to now. Oh, without question. And I, and I, and I respect what you're saying. I think again, in this, in this day and age, and I tell people this all the time, the, the age we're living in is the golden age of the independent. So when you, the, your journey is kind of very similar to ours. We got offered by a lot of name networks. I won't mention their names, but uh, when those networks came a calling, it came with a, it came with a, a, a tag. It came with having a, a change and be different. And, and I didn't feel, and the, and the team didn't feel that it was beneficial to us. So I totally respect where you're coming from. And in this day and age, you can create your own narrative. Um, you have a, a, a great following online. Um, you got a great team with you today that, that supports mm-hmm. you. So you, you're you doing it the right way. Again, you got to sleep at night. You got to feel good when you sleep at night. And if, if that's not the case, so be it. I, I mean, I'm obviously seeing some of the tragedies that's happened with, with the Travis Scott uh, event. And, you know, there's a lot of, people making comments and you got to feel good about what you put out. And I think again, you know, through this conversation that we're having with you, you, that's not your problem. You definitely can feel good about the music and the representation and how you present yourself. Because again, at the end of the day, that's all we got. That's all we got. One thing I can say to you is, is that I was amazed that Katy Perry, Lionel Richie and Luke Bryant chose to stand up on their own and sing along with me. I wish they would have showed you the whole interview. Like I said, there was a lot that was cut and paste. But overall, I had a really nice experience with them. And I wish that everyone would have been able to see that. It was really cool to be able to just run into Ryan Seacrest and just say, hi, <laughs> and you know, be able to interview with him. And you know, after the episode aired, they actually aired it in March. And then they a- aired it in April. So that was two times that I was receiving a massive amount of uh, exposure and I got to be able to speak to people from all over the world. I mean, I was getting screenshots from people in like India saying, I'm watching you on American Idol right now. (laughs) I had someone in Egypt. I had someone in Mexico. I mean, like it was all over the world. And before I was on American Idol, I had followers in other countries, but I don't think that it was a a broadness. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so I just think of it as a very positive, like you said, with the, the seed in the tree. American Idol was a seed for me, just another seed for me in my career to allow people to see, you know, the growth of me. Because before I was on American Idol, I had made appearances on other talk shows and I had been on news stations and I had worked with clients. And so it was just another opportunity for me to be able to build to my portfolio to be able to learn how to, you know, present myself on camera and also to be able to really have experiences that not a lot of people can even say they've had. And so mm-hmm. for that, I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity and what it's done for me. I just want to say this, you know, I don't mean to cut you off. No. There's nothing wrong with using a vehicle to get to, to get to a goal. I think we all have used a vehicle to get to where we want to. So there's nothing wrong with using American Idol to get to where you want to go. It just it doesn't define you. That's the Absolutely. first thing you even said. American Idol was, was good. Mm-hmm. Certain things good, certain things bad, but it doesn't define you. You used it, and now you've moved on. So there's nothing wrong with that. Yes. It's yeah. one of those things now where a lot of networks are, you know, wanting to say, like, that 
key subject line, American Idol singer. And so it's my job as the artist to remind people that there's so much more of me than just that one title. And I'm grateful that that title itself opens doors for me. And that's, that's kind of like where I leave it right now. Perfect example, Jennifer Holliday, American Idol. Absolutely. Win, but, but she used the vehicle and look at her now, you know? Mm -hmm. And look at her now. She's doing yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. yeah, that's right. But yeah, see, the right. lot of things people got to realize is that you was an artist and a singer before you got to American Night. Yes. And that's what your passion is. And they saw it and they said, OK, let's let's work with them because they saw something in you. And you say, OK, let me use use them to to show myself. And yeah. that's how it works. So, you know, you you got a better deal from out the whole thing for yourself to be more known. And it just helped help one another. That's all. It's just a symbiotic situation. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. There Talk about the, the next step for you, Isaiah. What's, what's, the, what's looking forward for 2022 as an a artist, performer, and somebody who's just looking to, to grow the brand even more? What's on the horizon? You know, earlier this year, I had released a dance remix album called Dance and Love. And the reason why I did that last year, I felt like during the pandemic, so many people were just we were all sitting at home ironically sitting on a couch and you know just getting really stuck in this like this this phase like where we're in this fog where we don't want to do anything yeah. because we're either sad or we've lost something and I just wanted to be able to create something that would kind of give people this this excitement to go exercise or go clean your house or you know just go have fun with some people because it's so easy for us to get caught in this bland schedule of our life and so i just created that i got to work with several djs and i've been promoting that throughout the year i just recorded a new song and a video the song is called i need you and that's going to be coming out next year the song is a very deep subject to me it is about people going through mental health you know as as i was mentioning there there's been so many struggles that people have gone through during the pandemic and I'm really hoping that this song is really just going to allow people that don't really express their feelings publicly, that when they hear this song, they know that they are not going to have to deal with this situation alone. Because I'll give you an example. I went, when I was flying home, there was a gentleman that I had met on the plane, and he had told me that he was dealing with some anxiety. He was the first person that I let listen to my song. Wow. And he said, can I, can I take this with me? because I suffer from depression wow. and it almost brought me to tears because it was like, this is what I know God wants me to do. He wants me to be creating music that has these seeds that are going to be able to help people. And we never know what's going to happen with our songs. We never know how it's going to touch somebody. But I know going back to that conversation about staying true to myself, if I do what everybody else is doing, then I'm going to be everybody else. If I write what I feel from my heart, then I know that it's going to be something that in the future it could grow to something else. So that that's another thing that I've been doing. Recently, my songs were put on Roku TV. That was really cool. And they, people were able to just go on Roku and just type in my name and, you know, find some videos of mine, scheduled TV performances that I will be doing in the next few weeks or so. Okay. I'm releasing a music video for my song, Wherever You Are, the song that we used for the Music Beats Cancer association so i worked with sandra rust she is a videographer and a photographer she's great at nature photography and she did such an excellent job at capturing that vibe that i wanted it to be so i'm excited to share that with people it may be coming out next week on television and i'm gonna share all those updates people could go on my website at isaiahgrassmusic.com to learn about that another thing is is that after I was on American Idol, I had a lot of people asking me if I had merch. And to be honest, I never really, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't really think about it was like a, a necessary thing. But so I made this mug it, well, with my team and it basically is wherever you are. And then the back of it, it says, you're never alone. I'm always in your heart. So that was something that I was giving out to allow people to purchase on my website. Mm -hmm. And there's t-shirts and 
You know, I even had extra, extra large Isaiah, just in case you get the urge. I mean, just. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh gosh. Mm. Uh, I even had people asking me to, you know, make hoodies and I mean, underwear. Like I've literally had people buy underwear and I was like, this is crazy. We don't need positive <laughs> energy down between there too now, Isaiah. That, that, that's <laughs> yeah, I, I'm very, I'm very grateful for the people <laughs> that have showed interest and in wanting to support my music because when I show my team, I'm like, this person just bought this. And uh, it's a very humbling experience. I never allow myself to think that I am better than anybody else. Right. Because, you know, I don't know if I talked about this, but last year after American Idol, I got hacked and I was severely affected by it. My identity was stolen from me. Seven years of content on my social media was deleted. My bank accounts were affected. My website was affected. Um, I lost three Facebook profiles with 5,000 friends each. So it was a, a huge, like, crumbling situation for me that I had to go through. And I've tried to do something positive with it, which is actually why last year I wrote the song. It was It's called More Than Friends. And the song is about trying to stop online hackers, predators, and sex trafficking. When I released that song, I had so many people reach out to me and tell me that they had been affected in some way. Obviously, these aren't people that want to publicly right. share these things. But this just goes back to saying about what you said, what is an Isaiah's future? I feel like what I've been doing with my struggles and making the music for it, it is allowing my future to tell its story on its own. Right. So I personally don't know what's going to happen to me in 2022. You know, I feel like I've been following my heart and I'm just letting it kind of like win, just yeah. follow what's going to happen. You yes, know, Isaiah, as somebody being, I, I can speak for my colleagues, my brother and Ed, who's like, my, I always call Ed my mother's favorite son, even though he's, she's not his mother. <laughs> but again, we come from a spiritual background. And, and again, this is so refreshing because I understand exactly what you're saying. Sometimes we, we walk by faith, not by sight. And sometimes things happen in our lives that we that are not always the best things to happen to folks. But it's a story that God is setting for us to be able to explain to other people, to kind of be a messenger and say, you know what? I went through this and I went through that, but I'm still here and I'm still able to help the next crop. The next person, that person you met on the flight was not by accident. That was that 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 story had to be said. So not to get over to spiritual, but as somebody who's a believer as well, I totally respect that because, again, mm -hmm. you know what you're doing and, and sometimes it's not even your own doing. It's it's being led by faith. So continue on that. Yeah. Go ahead, back and, see, and, the, and the piggyback off of what he just said as well is that you're like this, what you said, your music has a message and a meaning. And it's it, even though it happened to you, but just think about it, that it happened to millions and millions of other people out there. And by you sitting there expressing it and putting it out there, it makes them more comfortable and say, hey, you know what? Um, he going through it. Wow. So I understand it can reconnect more with them because it's really helpful. And it's a ther and it's very therapeutic to hear somebody going through that because you never know when you might just have somebody that you may just sit there and then make them be happy just to hear that and touch their feelings. Absolutely. I, one thing I'd like to say is, as a musician, I have tried so hard to be a transparent person, especially during the pandemic. You know, this goes back to all the artists right now that are just making songs for the sake of clout. And mm -hmm. it's, it's not beneficial. It's not doing anything to help people right now. It's not helping people who have lost their jobs and people who have lost their family members and people who are just like, mentally and emotionally lost inside and you know i've had a lot of people tell me that the music the way that i've been writing it is very much about christian music it's not i'm just following my heart and mm -hmm. i can't even say this enough but it's like there are so many struggles that people are going through we all need a friend like we all need someone to turn to but it's like sometimes people are so focused in their own problems that they don't even know what other people are doing and so that's why i've been trying so hard with the music that i've been making lately to really be able to help people there's another song that i didn't mention it's called this is not a love song and it's about going through toxic relationships mm. everybody 
has been in a toxic relationship. Yeah. Everybody. I've been in them, you know, parents have been in them, you know, friends have been in them. We've all done it. And so when I played that song, I kid you not, I had divorced women reaching out to me in my DM saying, I listened to this song. Wow. I never knew it was like this. And for me, that is where I feel like my future is. Like Mm, I've, I've been asked this question before where people are like, where do you see yourself in five years? There's so many things that have happened to me in the last year. I don't know. I'm just grateful that, you know, you guys even want to interview me right now because last year after I got hacked, I was going to quit because I was like crumbled and devastated. And so I thank you guys and every person. That's why I say thank you so much in my interviews because I listen back to it. But it's really a sense of gratitude because I'm really grateful to be able to still do this and, you know, hopefully plant seeds in other people's lives because it's so easy to be in this industry where everyone is seeing what other artists are doing. And it's been like with Music Beats Cancer and the way that I've really been able to present this to people is, is that if you've had cancer or your mom's had cancer or, you know, you're, you're recently have somebody that passed away from it, that if you can hear the song wherever you are and just listen to the words, the pre is when it's dark, I'll be your light. There's no need for you to hide. I will always be there for you. When you're scared and lost your way, everything will be okay. I'm going to be there for you wherever you are. And people just, it's just one of those things where you need to hear that sometimes. Yeah. You, we only need a cheerleader <laughs> once in a while. Yes. Isaiah, yeah. I can't thank you enough. This has been really, I mean, obviously we, we interview a lot of people, but this has been very inspirational even for me personally and i thank you thank so you. much where can people reach out to you find more information about your music the next steps for isaiah grass people can go to my website at isaiahgrassmusic.com they can follow me on my verified page on facebook and instagram my instagram is at isaiah g music my facebook's isaiah grass i recently made a tiktok i'm not the type of person to post three or four <laughs> videos a day like i'll do it like whenever so Mm -hmm. they can go on my tiktok it's isaiah grass um they can go on my youtube most everything that they need to find those i just go to isaiahgrassmusic.com i encourage people to go to the website click the follow button and sign up for my email list they'll receive a complimentary gift and they'll also be able to get any updates from me and that's how i kind of keep up with people and obviously if people want to stream my music i'm Mm -hmm. i'm really excited about this because when i went to go visit my family recently You know, you just don't know what's going to happen. So I was like, hey, Alexa, play Isaiah Grass. And, you know, she started playing my music. I was like, wow, that's cool. And, yeah, so people can listen on Alexa, Spotify. My music's playing on iHeartRadio, online. They can find everything about me if they just go to IsaiahGrassMusic.com. I thank you guys so much for giving me Thank you as well, Isaiah. Continue blessings and success to you. You're going to need a good pair of sunglasses because your future is very bright. Isaiah Grass, ladies and gentlemen, gonna take a quick I, break. Isaiah got Thank enough sunglasses. It's not <laughs> Come on back. Thank you.